this pretty cool looking little crossover is full of surprises. First of all, it's an all new model and that's always fun to explore. Second, it's a Buick, which you might not have been expecting from looking at it. And third, this is one of increasingly few new models offered at under $30,000. And that is for the top trim with destination. Base price is actually under $25,000. That's the real headline here. So we're gonna look at what you get and what you don't get for that price, as well as what it feels like to be behind the wheel. This is the Invista. It replaced the Encore as the entry-level Buick crossover. And in fact, all new Buicks on sale today are crossovers, and they all have names starting with the letters E-N. But it does not have to be confusing. We're here to help you out. If you head over to cargurus.com, you can read full written reviews on all of them. Plus, we've got pricing trends and deal ratings to help you make your decision. Just please subscribe before you go. The first time I saw one of these was last fall. I was out for a walk with my husband. We come across this and we really had to do the whole kind of, you know, pace around, check it out from all angles, really eyeball it, just like we do when we come across a classic or an exotic parked on the road unexpectedly. And actually, one of my coworkers called this a budget Urus, referring to the Lamborghini Urus. And you know what? I see it. This is a pretty sharp looking car and it is not your grandfather's Buick. Now, Buick has, of course, been leaning very intentionally away from that whole grandparent image for quite a while now. You've probably seen that, no, this is my Buick, and that's so you commercials. That's not a Buick. That's what I told him. So you. It is. Which are pretty cute as commercials go, but what's most convincing for me about this new image is this. This thing's existence and seeing it in person. Now, it does sport the redesigned TriShield logo, which really has a slick, more minimalist take with just a hint of the red, white, and blue inside these shields and the horizontal rather than the old diagonal orientation. I think it looks great and I think it's a really effective update. Now, I have the ST today. That's the middle trim and of course it stands for sport touring. It's got a gloss black mesh grille to set it apart from the others. Now, normally this trim would come with 18 inch wheels, but mine has been upgraded to 19 inch wheels. And I'll tell you, this sloping roof line and these really massive C pillars, they do not add up to great visibility, but the overall effect is very stylish. It's got a little baby duck tail back here, and sometimes when I'm walking around it out of the corner of my eye, I get a little whiff of Jaguar. So I do think it's really good looking. The only thing that makes me hesitate in saying this would be a great first car or a great car to take to college is that visibility, because otherwise it either has or it can have pretty much all of the tech and convenience features you might want, and you don't have to be embarrassed to be seen in it. So let's get in it. Yep, not embarrassed. I'm also not blown away, but it's not bad, and for the price point, it's pretty darn good. These seats are not the most comfortable, but they are heated. That's standard on the top trim and available on others, which is why I have it. Same is true of the heated steering wheel. I've got leatherette seats with this Santorini blue piping and contrast stitching because that's what's standard in the ST trim. If I were in the Avenir, which is the top trim, I would have real leather seats with off-white piping and stitching and it would say Avenir on the headrests. However, this front passenger seat would still be manual adjust only. That's all that's available. It's one of the concessions that we're seeing to the lower price. You can get a power adjustable driver's seat on any trim and that's standard on the top trim. The Invista shares a platform and a number of components with the Chevy Trax, but it does feel very much upgraded in the interior. The shape that we've got around the door handles becomes a motif that's repeated throughout. For example, in the way that the vents narrow into the center of the dash here. This housing for the two screens looks like something out of the Jetsons in a good way, but in a very welcome avoidance of futuristic upgrades, they have still given us physical climate controls as well as this button and volume knob for audio. We do also have some audio controls on the steering wheel, which we're used to seeing in most cars now. The flat bottom steering wheel is standard. The power moonroof is not. That is an optional upgrade on every trim. Up front, we've got 41.9 inches of legroom and 39.4 inches of headroom. Back here, that becomes 38.7 inches of legroom and 37.3 inches of headroom. So we're starting to feel the sloping roof a little bit. It bumps up here though, so it gives you a little more space if you're taller. We also have a completely flat floor back here, which is sort of unusual when you're not in an EV. That's gonna be nice for whoever has to sit in the middle. There's 20.7 cubic feet of cargo space behind the rear seats and 42 cubic feet with them folded. 
only the top trim has a power lift gate standard, although it is available on the other two. Now, I always have my hands full when I'm leaving the house, and that's still a feature that I personally could live without. But what about you? Is a power lift gate a must have? Every Invista gets a 1.2 liter turbocharged three cylinder engine that makes 137 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque, just like the Chevy Trax. Also like the Trax, but unlike the Encore that it replaced, the Invista is front wheel drive only. So if you're looking for a relatively affordable Buick with all wheel drive, you're gonna wanna look at the Encore GX. That is a separate model and it does still exist. Now, overall, this does not drive like a cheap car. It doesn't have that sort of chaotic experience that you get from some inexpensive vehicles where it feels like very little attention was paid to control weight and so forth. This is pretty comfortable. You do feel the small engine, especially in that it's very obvious when you shift out of park into drive or reverse. You, you feel and hear that, but the small engine is not a problem with acceleration. This has no trouble getting up to highway speeds. Basically, this is just a more comfortable and calmer, chiller version of the Chevy Trax, which is exactly what you want when you're taking a model and making it more premium. This is an interesting thing that I would not expect for the price point. If you get the 19 inch wheels, so either the top trim or the ST with the upgraded wheels, you also get a separate Watts Link rear suspension that was specifically designed to make it more comfortable on those larger wheels. It's kind of interesting that they've gone ahead and engineered a separate suspension and I think it's doing a really good job. This is a very comfortable ride. Maybe a little harsh over very sharp edges to bumps, but generally nice and comfortable despite the larger wheels. Handling is good too. Now, as I said before, visibility is not great. It's got a pretty massive C pillar and a teeny tiny rear window that makes a Celica's look large. So especially combined with the fact that blind spot monitoring is not standard, that would definitely make me hesitate to recommend this to a new driver. I think that's not going to be good for anybody's confidence and you definitely could use a confidence boost when you're new behind the wheel. It's been a little annoying for me, actually. Now you do have the option to change your own gears. That took me a minute to figure out, but it's down here on the shifter. You can put it into L and then you can use these buttons to shift up or down. However, I'm going to put it back into drive. You're going to have to go by feel and sound when you decide when to shift because there is no tachometer. There's just a pretty simple, pretty basic driver information display. That was a big bump. That eight inch driver information display is fully digital. That's not super common on entry level vehicles. So that's kind of cool and it is standard. So is this 11 inch infotainment touchscreen. Obviously they're presented together. What's a little funny is that the power and volume knob is so close to the driver. It's really maybe kind of hard for your passenger to reach it, but maybe you like that to just protect your tunes. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard and so is Wi-Fi hotspot capability. A wireless charging pad is standard on the top trim and it is available on the other two. So I have it. It's right here. I've also got a USB-C and a USB-A charging port here, two on the back as well for four total. Now let me show you the backup camera. Of course, every new car has one. This one's kind of weird. The placement, first of all, I can see the license plate in the camera view, which is unusual. Second, it makes it look like I'm an unsafe distance from the car behind me. Like I'm practically underneath it, which I am not. And you can see I've still got another line in the parking distance indicator. It turns out that you can trust that, but it was very nerve wracking finding that out. I had to have a spotter. GM's buckle to drive system is standard. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. It requires seat belts to be buckled before you can shift out of park. Rear seat reminder is also standard. And so is the Buick driver confidence package. So that includes features like automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, forward collision alert, and more. It does not include adaptive cruise control or rear park assist, rear cross traffic alert, or lane change alert with blind zone alert. Those features are all available, just depending on your trim, you might have to add a particular package in order to get them. 
The 2024 Buick and Vista starts at $23,495, including destination. And that makes this the least expensive model that I have ever reviewed for this channel. And by the way, we would love it if you would subscribe. Now the range tops out at $29,695 base MSRP for the top trim. The Invista ST that we've seen today gets pretty close to that $29,070 sticker, but that's got an extra cost color, it includes destination, and it includes just about every package that you can throw at it. So in terms of base price, this falls right in between the Chevy Trax and the Buick Encore GX in its base trim with front wheel drive. If you want all wheel drive on your Encore GX, that's bringing your base price up to $29,195. Or you could look elsewhere, for example, the Mazda CX-30 that has standard all wheel drive, but when you factor in destination, you're gonna be somewhere in the $26,000 range. Now, talking of attractive crossovers, both the CX-30 that I just mentioned and the Honda HRV are good examples of other options that are out there. Recently updated, pretty good looking, just in a slightly more pedestrian way. Nobody is calling them a budget Lambo. Now, there is a budget Alpha on the market, the Alfa Romeo Tonale, although of course it costs more than this. There are also other sort of fashion forward crossovers that really emphasize looks like the Dodge Hornet and the entire Mini Cooper range, basically. This, I would say, falls somewhere in the middle. You know, it's not stylized, but it is stylish. And I think that that's gonna make it a great choice for the right person. And if you think that you might be that person, head over to cargurus.com for more. I wanna say a quick thank you to our friends at the beautiful Lars Anderson Auto Museum for letting us film on this property in front of the historic carriage house, which is home to America's oldest car collection. If you're anywhere even near Brookline, Mass., this is worth a visit.